Today, I'm going to share with you my proven SEO keyword strategy that ranks this website for over 92,000 keywords. Pretty insane. And if you pick the right keywords, you can increase your odds of ranking, you'll save time, get better results, and have a competitive advantage because most of your competitors don't know how to do this. And let's say this keyword strategy increases your probability of ranking by a measly 10 to 20%. That means you'll boost your productivity and results as well by 10 to 20%, which will compound over time. And over a year, you can now achieve in eight months what you could previously do in nine to 10 months. You've just saved yourself 30 to 60 days of work. So basically, you just won back 240 hours. So boom shakalaka, let's get into it. Let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to give you a keyword checklist. Uh, this is the 80-20 of getting your keyword strategy right. So if you look at a lot of these keywords that we're ranking number one for or getting a decent amount of traffic for, I notice there's, there's quite a few trends and commonalities between them. So for example, if we look at this keyword, purple bird, right? We're not even ranking number one for it, but it's bringing a lot of traffic to the website. And bear in mind, these estimates are way off, right? Normally they're going to be way higher than they actually show to be on Ahrefs. Now this typically comes down to traffic potential. So if you see a high traffic potential of a thousand or more, that's typically going to bring in a lot of traffic, even if you don't rank number one for it. Now you might be wondering, that sounds good, but I don't have Ahrefs. How do I figure this out? How do I know if it gets a lot of traffic potential? So if you want to go for a freebie, you could use Uber Suggest, for example. You can type in the keyword. Um, for the keyword that you want to check, if you scroll down to content ideas down here, you can see how many estimated visitors there are for each page. We can see which pages are getting a lot of traffic for that keyword, right? Next up, what you can also look for is low value sites in the top 10 that aren't really providing a lot of value when it comes to SEO and what people are searching for. Because if you know, that pages are in the top 10, but they're not optimized for SEO, then you can probably steal their spot. So how do you figure that out? Well, if you type the keyword into Google and you see pages like Kiora ranking, for example, or maybe you see Pinterest or Reddit, for example, as well. Well, typically for these keywords, if you've got a page like this on Pinterest that's ranking in the top 10 for the keyword, you know it's very easy to rank for because this page is not optimized for SEO. It doesn't provide a lot of value. It's not what people are looking for. And therefore, if you come along with a well-structured article, you're going to win. Now, the other thing about this is when you come across a site like this, for example, Pinterest, and you see a page ranking in the top 10 on the SERPs, you can actually use this as inspiration for more keyword ideas. How do you figure that out? And by the way, just before I show you that, all of this you can figure out for free, right? So if you type in the keyword into Google and you look down the SERPs, you can see for free whether Pinterest is in the top 10 or whatever low-value website it is. And let's say, for example, you find Pinterest ranking in the top 10 for your niche and your keywords, then you could go, right, well, how can I find more keywords that they're ranking for? And what you can do is if you put site colon whatever site you're trying to scrape for keywords, and then in title and put the niche that you're trying to rank in, for example, like birds, you can see what other pages are ranking and getting traffic. I mean, for example, this page on beautiful birds right here, if you check out, it's getting 171 traffic. It's the first page that popped up for this set of terms here. And you can scroll through the list and go, okay, what other keywords are there that I know I can outrank Pinterest on because they're not providing a lot of value. For example, you can see this page comes up for Pinterest. The keyword potentially could be gorgeous birds. Sounds a bit random, but actually when you plug it into Ahrefs like that, you can see a high traffic potential. You can see Pinterest ranking in the top 10. There you go. Another keyword opportunity that you know Pinterest is ranked for and therefore you could too. Now, the seven steps in this keyword checklist, and we're on to number three now, which is finding old and outdated pages ranking in the top 10. Now, how do you figure out whether they're old and outdated? Well, when you actually check the SERPs for the keyword, for example, what time do birds wake up? Let's plug that in. You can see sometimes you're going to find URLs with an old, outdated date in the title. For example, for this URL right here, you can see that 2014 is in the title. We're ranking number one for the keyword. It brings in a decent traffic potential. And when you look at the SERPs, you can see this page is very outdated and therefore we could easily come along and outrank it. And then what this whole checklist is about is adding lots of factors in combination when you search through keywords, figure out, okay, which one's the best priority to go for. So for example, this page traffic potential is decent. Keyword difficulty is decent. Cure is ranking. Wired.com has a page. This page is from 2014. It's basically got all the green flags of a keyword that we could potentially rank for if we go for it. And that's why we can rank the number one for keywords like this. And then we monetize the traffic that we get with ads and make money with it passively. And all you have to do is publish the content, right? And go for the keyword. So why does this process work so well? Well, simply because Google places a freshness score in its rankings. So if content is newer and fresher and more updated, it's more likely to rank, which means that you can outcompete your competitors if you can go back 
and refresh your content or create newer content than your competitors in the rankings. It's going to help you get a boost. Now, I actually created this free tool with make.com where you can basically refresh old content automatically based on your keywords and it can generate new content too. If you want to get access to that, it's in my free course. Link is in the comments. Feel free to check that out. But basically, whether you do this manually, whether you do it with AI, whatever way you want to do it, by publishing newer content, you get rewarded for a freshness score and therefore you can now compete your competitors and get better rankings. Now, another thing that I've noticed across most of the keywords we're ranking for, if we take these top five, for example, let's open them up and we'll pull up the SERPs. So the first page of Google, there we go. And there's one thing that's literally the same in every single search result. And that is a fact that there's always a low DR website ranking in the top 10, right? So for example, if there's three or more pages with a low domain rating, AKA authority score, ranking in the top 10, that is a very easy keyword to rank for. And therefore you've got a very high chance of ranking for it. That's because they don't have many backlinks pointing to their site. Therefore it's easy to outrank them. So for example, here you can see one, two, three pages rank with a DR of 30 or less in the top 10. Let's check the next one. One, two, three pages with a domain rating of 30 or less in the top 10. This one too, DR6, DR6, 4, 29. And this one as well, right? DR6 and DR16 there. Nice and easy to rank. It's always going to be easy to rank for those keywords. And then it's just down to you to figure out, okay, which keywords actually have low DRs ranking in the top 10. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this, right? So for example, if you're trying to rank for a keyword related to camp rubber bird, right? What you can do is you just put up to DR30 in the top five. And there we go. We've got three keywords we could easily rank for. But once if you don't have a paid tool, once if you want to figure this out for free, well, you can use a tool like SEMrush. And I don't pay for this tool. As you can see, it's telling me to upgrade right there. So the version that I'm on is free. And then if you filter down to very easy, like so, and we'll just take a random keyword like bird whistle. And typically that will find really easy keywords for you to go for, right? So if you check the keyword difficulty, it's 4%, therefore very easy. How do we know it's easy? Well, you don't need a address to do this, but if you did want to check it out, then you can see a domain rating one there and a domain rating one there. Therefore, you know, it's very easy to rank for that keyword. And that's basically how you can find easier keywords with less competition in the top 10 for free as you can see on the free plan right here. Now, another easy way to find keywords is to look for questions, right? So for example, if I go to Ahrefs and I filter down to contains how, what, when, or why, or who, right? So basically questions. Then you can see that 20,000 of these keywords and a lot of them, you can see we're ranking number one, number one, et cetera. They're all question related keywords. Now, why would we go for questions? Well, we can still monetize the traffic with ads, which means we make money. For example, you can see my Mediavine account here. You can see we made $1,061 in August, 1,000 in July, 1,044 in June, etc. And this process of going after questions means we can find easy keywords to rank for. There's less competition. We can still make money. And usually there's a lot less competition. The other thing I like about this is that if you're using AI to generate the content, then it's very easy for AI to figure out what this keyword is about and therefore write relevant content that ranks with just one click. Whereas if you look at a lot of the keywords that were actually ranking like third page or fifth page or seventh page or whatever, you can see that a lot of these keywords are not questions. Why is that? Probably because the content we've created isn't that relevant to the search intent. Why is the content created not that relevant to the search intent? Simply because when we've used AI to create it, it's very hard for AI to figure out, okay, what are people searching for? Whereas if you go for questions, it's obvious. And therefore, if you generate the content at GPT or whatever tool you use, you can easily figure out the search intent. Now, my final part of the SEO checklist for keywords is to make sure that the topics you're writing about are semantically relevant. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, are the keywords relevant to the topic of your website? So for example, if you look at our top pages and which ones bring in the most traffic and therefore we rank highest for, you can see that typically each of these keywords, for example, like purple bird, Florida birds of prey, yellow bird, GM bird, camp robber bird, these top five keywords all have the word bird in. Surprise, surprise. They're all semantically relevant to the topic of the website, which is about birds. And if you looked at our website and you saw, right, how many pages have we got about birds? 3,000. How many pages with the title bird in it? 900. Now, how does this help your SEO traffic? Well, basically, the more you create content around semantically relevant articles, the more authority your website has on that topic. 
because your overall authority, as you publish more and more content focusing on the same topic, continuously builds. I mean, if we scroll down to something that doesn't include birds, for example, like pigeon, you can see that we have 350 semantically relevant pages to the keyword of pigeon. And if you scroll down, that means because we've published so much content on the same topic, our authority goes up and therefore we can rank for more keywords around the same topic. And the more we squeeze more keywords and content around that topic, the more keywords we're going to rank for because our authority goes up overall. And that's it. That's basically how we rank for 92,000 keywords. You have to know there are a million other things we could check with keywords, but these are the 80, 20 of it, as I mentioned, based on what's working for me. And your keywords, they don't have to tick every single box on the list, but the more they can, the better. And I'll include all of these checks. It's basically an SOP that you can check or your team can use to monitor and audit the keywords that you're going for. If you want free access to that, it's in my course. You might ask how many keywords should you try and rank for? And I would say as many as you can that fit the criteria we've talked about today. You might also say, but what happens if you have too many options? Well, either you can go for them all, but if you're limited by time, energy, or resources to create the content, then prioritize the one with the most green flags that we've talked about today. And these are all green flags. You might say, how do you prioritize the keyword? You can audit the keyword and you can use the criteria that we've talked about today and then plug that into a formula. How do you do that? Well, I've created this free tracker right here that you can see, basically you plug in your keyword. You can mark whether it's high traffic potential, low value size, low DR, outdated pages, etc. And you can just fill this in or your team can fill it in manually when you're reviewing and auditing keywords yourself. And that way you give yourself the highest probability. Now, how do you know which keyword is the best? Well, actually what I did was I plugged this tracker into ChatGPT advanced data analysis. It then created a formula for calculating the best keyword potential. And then from here, we translated that into Google Sheets. And you can see you've got an overall score for each keyword. The higher, the better. Bing, bang, bosh, you're ready to go. And there you go. You've got your own free keyword research tool that you can easily audit keywords and figure out, okay, which ones are the highest priority and which ones can I easily rank for? And if you want access to that, I'll include this free template inside my free chat GPT SEO course. You can get that for free. Links in the comments. Happy days. Now you might say, is this guaranteed to work? No, it's just what works for me. But if you do SEO, it's a probability game, right? And the more you can stack the probabilities in your favor, the higher your rank is going to be. So thanks so much for watching. If you want access to this free spreadsheet, the whole SEO checklist that we've talked about. And once you've done the auditing of the keywords, if you want access to my content checklist as well for SEO, you can get that for free inside my free chat GPT SEO course. Link is in the comments. Or if you want to book in a call with me about joining our SEO mastermind to get more results. And it's basically a coaching program where we teach you how to get more leads, traffic and sales with SEO in a very simplified way. Then feel free to book that in. Links in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.